Hi, everybody. I wanted to talk about layout, and I wanted to talk about the ways in which points of interest can help the layout of a world you're creating, um, whether or not it's a museum or it's a forest or it's a house. Um, so I built this little model here to help sort of illustrate the way in which points of interest can really, really help you communicate the story you're trying to tell. And this is a technique that's used in the theme park business for dark rides. It also is being used in uh, video games, and it's also used in laying out museum exhibits. So this is not any particular story. This is just a little teeny model that's meant to help illustrate this concept. And uh, it has no story. In fact, I've even painted everything the same color. So we're not necessarily worried about where we are, but we're going to talk about the ways in which we can arrange what you look at and orchestrate the experience of a visitor who's coming into the world you've created. So right now I've got my little arrival person right here. And if this was a dark ride, this would be the load area. And so you would be loading in a vehicle here and you would be going down here. You'd be turning, going down this corridor, making another turn here. Then you would come this direction, go through these doors into this room. You would make a turn here. And then, oops. Then you would come down here finally to the sort of finale where then you would come back through to the exit and unload. Uh, very, very similar if you were to walk inside of a museum. You would start at the beginning, you would walk all the way through all the exhibits, and then you would end up at the exit when you would leave. So there's an opportunity when people are visiting, since they are arriving at one particular place, for you to orchestrate how the story unfolds for them. And the way that you can do that is through points of interest or the things that they're going to look at. So I've got these numbers here and I'm just going to grab uh, number one and I've got number one here and I'm arriving here. So you want to put points of interest at the place that they're going to look at next. It's um, I'm going to put it right here at the end of this corridor. If I uh, go back here and I look where I've entered behind me is sort of a closed door. So that's a dead end. So the only place for me to go is forward. So I want to create something that's acting like a carrot that's going to draw the visitor to this direction. So the same would be true is once I've arrived and I'm looking at that, I turn the corner. This is my next obvious place to put a point of interest. So I'm going to grab number two and I'm going to put number two right there. And same is true as once I've come down here. Um, as I've turned the corner here and I'm starting to look down this way, these points of interest are like the heroes or they're like the stars of a scene. They're the area that we want to catch their eye. So anything else that happens between one point of interest and another is a supporting role. So you could fill this corridor with jars or with lanterns or you name it. But really everything that's going to be in here is going to support that. So I've come down here, I've seen number two, I've turned the corner. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take number three and I'm going to put number three here. So I'm turning the corner and that's where I'm going to look there. Then I turn the corner and then there's another opportunity to look down here. So I'm going to grab number four and I'm going to put four, number four right down here. And so I... Um, have hit an end where I have to turn left. And so the next place to put a point of interest, number five, I'm going to stick over here in this area. And as these sort of leave the world of corridors and make their way into rooms, these focal points are the establishing shots. You're going to turn and you're going to be seeing that number five framed by the doorway. Everything's going to be about that. But once you get into the room and you start milling around, even if there's lots of objects in here, that number five is still going to be the most important thing in this scene. That's going to be the focal point. So once again, I turn and I look down here, and the next potential focal point is going to be the end of this corridor here. So I'm going to put the number six here. And then finally, I'm going to make another turn here, and I'm going to go through all these arches, and I'm going to end up here to whatever this finale is, and I'm going to put number seven. So number seven is going to go right there. So let's review it so that I'm arriving here at kind of a dead end, and then I have to make a decision as where I'm going to go. And these numbers or these points of interest are 
going to pull me through this experience so that it's going to be like a movie framing the shot. It's going to be determining where I need to look and it's going to draw me down to it. So once we jump into this, I want you to, to feel what it's like to come across these points of interest and, and feel about how much they draw attention to themselves and that you have to pull away from them and then you're rewarded with another point of interest. So let's just take this and uh, let's have a visit. Whoops, I grabbed number one. I'm putting it back. And so let's right now go down and appear in this world. Okay, here we are. We're inside the world that was represented by that model. And you can see that I'm in the area where my arrival spot is. And if I look behind me, there's just this, this symbol of a door that's closed. So I can't really go that direction. So the thing that's going to draw me forward, even though I have the you know free will, I could hang out here forever, is this, there's something down here at the end that's pulling me towards it. This could be anything. It could just be an architectural element. It could be a collection of props. It even could be a figure or some animation. But I'm going to get drawn down here toward this first thing. It's And once I get here, if I look to my left, I can see there's now another thing for me to go to. Uh, these arches add a sort of a perspective that acts as an arrow that points you to the, the next piece of interest. And once again, that thing can be just props or architecture. It could be a storefront. It could be a person. It could be an animal. Um, but know that I could fill up this alleyway or this hallway with a lot of props, but those props are in service to the next most important thing, which in this case is the number two, and is the, the, the pulling me deeper and deeper into this story or this environment. So I'm going to go through here and head down toward number two. And the reward of, of coming down here is I get to examine the details of whatever this is that has been designed in this area. And if I look to my right, then I immediately send number three. So now I've lost interest in two. Now there's something else for me to look at. And in each of these cases, I've tried to make the thing the environment that these points of interest are in slightly different so that there's it's not more of the same. I'm not just going down endless hallways. I'm actually going to get rewarded by seeing something different and interesting. Now, if I over here and I look to my right, now there's number four. So yet another reason for me to move forward, I'm drawn to seeing uh, the whatever this bit of detail is down here. It's worth noticing over here on the left, I've actually kind of poke some holes that give you a glimpse at number five in the next room. But the important thing is that four is still dominating my interest. And I'm going to still go down here to see whether or not I can find uh, some, uh, some, some details or, or bits of story or maybe some characters. Once I get down here and I'm done examining this, if I turn left, now I have number five. And notice that number five is completely theatrically framed by the door. And that's on purpose because although the room that number five is in is actually quite large, the most important thing is the way that I've laid out this location. So this is the interest. This is more interesting than some of the other places I've gone. I'm getting deeper into the story and I'm starting to really get a feel that I'm deeper in um, this environment. So I come in here. I've got this sort of show case, whatever it may be, it has number five in it. And I could wander around in this room all I want. Um, but uh, And there could be lots and lots of little details or hints or things for me to play with. But I've made a decision that this this focal point here is the most important thing. So if I have a story element that needs to be interacted with or information or a character I need to talk to or someone I need to meet, it needs to happen in this place where I've been rewarded and I've looked at it. So once I'm done in this room, if I start heading this direction, now I get number six. And once again, perspective is acting like an arrow that's making me want to go down to number six. And I'll make my way down here. There's opportunities that these alcoves could have really interesting props. There's even an opportunity that I could go other ways to get down to number six. But the goal is that this point of interest is going to be the thing that's going to make me continue on my journey through this environment. So um, I make my way to six, and then once I get there and I'm done examining whatever's here, when I make a left, 
I now need number seven. And so I've made these arches. Once again, I'm using perspective, but I'm actually pushing the perspective so that they get smaller, really, really forcing like a telescope right down at the most important thing, which in this case is number seven. So I come into here and hopefully if it wasn't just blocks that I was using, uh, this would be the finale and whatever was happening in here would be, would trump anything else that I'd seen in the other rooms. This is the reward for having followed my way through this environment. So, and once I've had the payoff of being in here and doing whatever the story allows me to do, then I can come back here and I can uh, finish my experience. So let's pop back out of the model and, uh, and uh, we can look again at uh, how all the pieces work together. Okay, so we're back. So as you saw, that uh, it's one thing to look at a model from above or even when you're building it. It's quite another thing when you're inside of it and you get sort of the visual experience of wandering through an environment. So hopefully you've seen that these points of interest are really great tools as world builders or theme park builders or exhibit builders to uh, guide your audience, to actually pull them through a space from one to the next. And there's an opportunity too to orchestrate compositionally and frame those points of interest so that not only are you drawn to the fact that there's something at the end there that you're going towards, but you've orchestrated all the architecture or the surrounding elements to really pull you into um, that story and design. So thanks for following and uh, I appreciate your time and try these out when you're building your worlds and see whether or not you can uh, build the emotional reaction, and support the story you're trying to tell by using points of interest.